but their calling card is making sure they take you out of what you want to do offensively. Mix in some zone, some one three one, a little bit of everything to defend the card here tonight. And yeah, oh by the way, there is a guy who is seven foot five, starting at center, who is the tallest player in college basketball and who leads the nation for a second straight year in block shots per game, nearly five. There he is, number 33 in red, jumping center, Jamarion Sharp. No surprise, he wins the tap. And it's the Hilltoppers with the basketball first. Jarius Hamilton, former Boston College Eagle and Maryland Terrapin. Emmanuel Acott is somebody we haven't talked about. He is also a difference maker. Here he is, number 13, firing for the first time. And he connects. And that's one of the things to look forward to watching from the Hilltoppers. They shoot the three as well as anyone in the country. 48% for Acott on the season, and he's second on the team from beyond the arc. Yeah, that would be Luke Frampton, number 14, who is at 58%. And as a team, as L. Ellis Smith fires, as you mentioned, Corey, Western Kentucky shoots it at 43%. Only Utah State is better so far this year. And that is impressive when you think about the and, and they didn't have a great shooting game last time out, so those numbers would be even higher if not for that 10-day break where Rick Stansberry said they didn't get the practice time necessary to really have the rhythm that he wanted, but they got it in and they're prepared for this game today. Yeah, only 3 of 18 in that win over Wright State, which proves to me, Corey, that they can win in different ways, and that's where Davion McKnight comes in. You don't need to shoot the three to win when he's doing those things. And right now, we've got some conversation between Acott and Jalen Withers, and it's going to be a... You see these two guys already getting into it, and this is a big-time matchup. If you're Western Kentucky, you got the first win last year in the last 10 attempts. And they want to be able to repeat that performance and let everyone know it was no fluke. Yeah, they beat the Cardinals by 10 at Diddle Arena last year. And trying to do it consecutive years, offensive foul on Withers as Acott stood his ground. Well, Acott, I'm sorry, Acott and Withers having that conversation early, and that's going to be the second foul on Withers. Already the technical foul and then the push off gets him his second early and he's got to take a seat. This is similar to what happened to Withers in the App State game where he missed a majority of that game in foul trouble and went scoreless. So that's one of your three tri-captains, fourth-year player heading to the bench with two fouls less than a minute in the ball game. He's been replaced by 6'8 freshman Kamari Lands. Acott no off the front rim. So much on the plate of number three in white this year. L. Ellis, another one of the tri-captains, leads this team in scoring, 11th in the ACC. But one of the big problems for the cards this year, the turnovers right on cue. He averages five per game. God blame you. You talked it up. You talked my man L into turning that over. Three turnovers already for the cards with only a minute and 20 of game action being played, yet to get a field goal attempt. Well, they're averaging about 17 turnovers a game. Hard to win games like that. Hamilton off the mark, long rebound tracked down by Mike James. And here is L. Ellis. And you can see right now, backing off of Brandon Huntley Hatfield, he's only one for seven from beyond the three-point arc this year. And of course, because I talked about it, he knocked one down. You can't take credit for that. That is the that. first three-point field goal he has made that. since game one this year. What do you mean I can't take credit for that? All right, let's see you do it on this end. Okay, let's see. Frampton didn't shoot it well last time. I'm thinking we're going to see my guy get a look. I didn't say he was going to make it. I just said he's going to get a look. And of course he's going to get a look. <laughs> I want to hear you say Sharp's going to shoot a three. <laughs> 3-3 three, three. early on here at the KFC Yum Center. A lot of folks have made the uh, drive from Bowling Green. It's about two hours south of here, and I have a feeling many folks are going to be calling in sick tomorrow with this late tip. Sidney Curry to the left hand. That's his dominant hand, and he is one of those returning players. They need to play better. And honestly... I believe that is the production they need most. You're talking about a guy who was a monster to end the season last year and has not been that this year. 
And you can tell this Louisville team might be 0-9, but there is no apathy among the fan base. Nice cut by McKnight for his first two. And a great job by McKnight cutting to the open spot, and more importantly, the pass to allow him to be able to finish amongst the trees. Here's Ellis, the senior from Durham, North Carolina. We've got an all North Carolina battle right there. Hamilton up from Charlotte. Sharp pulls down the rebound. McKnight, natural left-hander, able to get into the lane. That's a specialty. Ball knocked out of bounds. And it'll stay with the tops. But you can see early that the Hilltoppers are going to attack the paint. They don't fear shot blocking from the card, so McKnight will spend a lot of time in the painted area here this evening. McKnight into Frampton. Tough shot. Mike James with the rebound. Huntley Hatfield's going to be called for the foul as Hamilton wound up on the floor. I can't believe you're not giving me credit for the Brandon Huntley Hatfield. I mean, I, I called him into action to knock down a three. He hadn't made a three since game one this season. And as I talk about, he knocks one down. And, and you know what, Dougie Fresh? First the Fat Boys break up, and now this. <laughs> if I allowed you to, you would take credit for all 50, 55 made field goals we're going to see today. No, not that high of a percentage. Frampton knocked it out of bounds. Louisville will keep. Ten seconds remaining on the shot clock. All right, you got another prediction? No, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop predicting. No, I'm not done. I'm just for not on this possession. All right. I'm not feeling it right now. All right. <laughs> Into Curry, give it back to Kamari Land. Lance working hard for his own shot. Nice job defensively to stick with him. McKnight. Did he hit him with a boom bip? That is a boom bip for sure. You saw the right to left, the left back to the right, the pull up jumper. Is that why you think he's a throwback? Because he gets the job done in the mid range? No doubt. He does not need to step back. I don't know, body type, the way he carries himself. Never too high, never too low. Ellis with a sweet pull up. And I like the way L. Ellis came off of the screen and roll there, looking to get downhill, but settling for the mid range jumper, knocking it down, not over penetrating, and getting the turnover. Pass deflected. Good defense by Kamari Lands. And that brings us to our first media timeout the Louisville Cardinals. Is your one basketball coach to have won a national championship as a player, a coach, and be a first-round NBA draft pick? The only one, and when you think of Kenny Payne, you think of great recruiting, you think of energy and passion along the sideline, and it's going to take some time. I mean, and you know what? I love the fact that we're here today, and the lower bowl is full of fans here still supporting this team, which, of course, it's one of the greatest basketball programs from, from a tradition standpoint in the country. Well, from a television standpoint, as you know, Corey, over the last 20 years since ESPN has tracked these things, this is easily the best television market in the country. People tune in in droves, not just for the Cardinals, but for college basketball in general. Well, and again, when you consider the fact that you have both Louisville and the University of Kentucky right here along Interstate 64, but you have a lot of other great basketball programs in the state of Kentucky. You start thinking the races of Murray State, Western Kentucky with Rick Stansberry. Basketball is only second to horses in this state, in the Bluegrass State. I drove past Churchill Downs this afternoon. We had a little time to kill, and uh, I've been there before. Have you been? Have I been where? Churchill Downs. Absolutely. Been out there, hung out. Never been to the Derby, though. Neither I, have I. I coached the Kentucky Derby Festival back in the back in the spring of 2017, and we had an opportunity to go and toward Churchill Downs, and that was actually the last year of the Kentucky Derby Festival, so I can say I shut it down. <laughs> because of you. <laughs> but then maybe that's not a good thing. Hamilton with a couple of free throws. Western Kentucky scored the last four points since the break to take the four-point lead. And we see Western Kentucky picking up now, a little token 94 foot pressure, but with Louisville having the turnover issues that they have, Coach Stansbury is going to find his ways to go at them and try to put some pressure on this defense. Now the Hilltoppers 
in man-to-man -man defense that then looks like it drops back into zones. What have you seen from them defensively so far against Louisville? Well, they want to continue to mix it up, but that's what you look forward to seeing is the big fella leading the nations in block shot and coming up with a big one there, trying to turn into some offense on the other end for the guy. He leans in now for six points, and it behooves Western Kentucky to keep sharp near the basket when you've got a guy like him at 7-5, a prolific shot blocker. You don't want him coming out. Well, he comes out nicely to pick up another block shot, but you don't want him defending on the perimeter. Throw it up. Pass deflected out of bounds, and the Hilltoppers will keep it. But you see Sharp back-to-back -back blocks on two possessions, and in all honesty, it's offensive players thinking that they can shoot jump shots over top of them, not recognizing how long the wingspan is at seven foot five. And he's covers, he's able to cover so much ground and affecting shots. Even the ones he doesn't get to, he makes you off. Well, he is the tallest hilltopper ever, no surprise. The tallest in the country this year. He's an inch taller than Zach Eady at Purdue. And last year was kind of his emergence. He tied with Indiana's Trace Jackson Davis for the third most dunks in college basketball. Offense is still a work in progress, but he can do that. I'll give you credit for that. I will give you credit <laughs> for the lob. A nice pass by Jarris Hamilton to find the big fellow. When he doesn't have a body attached, you got to make sure you give him those looks on the interior. And Jamarion told us earlier this afternoon with his family about two and a half hours from here in Hopkinsville, he was going to have good representation in the stands, friends and family. Unable to call in that rebound now. But he can get up and throw down if the pass is anywhere near the rim. Absolutely. And you see, without someone really being attached, and I love the way he puts the right hand up to allow Hamilton to know he's open. There's no one putting a body onto his legs to keep him from jumping. Is able to go up and finish. Now, he taps the top of the head, meaning that he dunked on someone. I'm not sure who he dunked on, but hey, at the end of the day, if I could do that now, mm -hmm. I would absolutely be tapping the top of my head, letting the world know I just got a dunk. He can tap his head every time he dunks because he's dunking on everybody. 8-0 Western Kentucky run, snapped by L. Ellis. And that is the second three that the Cards have hit in this game. Shooting the basketball better, made nine three-point field goals in the loss to Florida State. Last time out, a season high and maybe starting to find some confidence on the offensive end from beyond the arc. Jordan Rawls has come into the game, as has that man, Christian Lander, who misses. Rawls picks up the long rebound and misfires. Cardinals come away with it. Lands to Ellis. Tries the Euro step, and the defender was waiting there for him. Offensive foul against Albert Ellis III, his first personal. That's a great job just getting back, choosing exactly where L. Ellis is going to go. Frampton gets his body into a legal guarding position, absorbs the contact. Ron Gruber right on top of that, and that is the right call. Big time officiating crew tonight, along with Gruber, Roger Ayers, Lee Cassell. Now we got the A-team again on the call. And now we see the cards mixing it up a bit, going to a zone defensively. Three ball. Why didn't you call it, Corey? Well, because they were in a zone. And whenever you're in a zone, you've got to identify where Frampton is. He shoots 58% from three. You have to make sure you close out to his body, not allowing him to have that much space. Ellis fouled on the drive. And that'll take us to our next timeout. Luke Frampton against a zone. His eyes light up. It doesn't matter how close he is to the three-point line. Maybe we should count it for four. Talked about him second nationally in the country. Actually, well, no, wait a minute. No, he's first, isn't he? He's number two no, he's in the country two. behind Stetson's Weza Panza. What is he shooting? 59%. Oh, okay. I was about to say, you shoot 58% and you're second? Yep. Here's L. Ellis. Back into the game, Jalen Withers playing with those two fouls. He's got his first two points. And Withers basically had to hit reset on this game. Didn't make it through the first minute with the two fouls. But now in the zone for Kenny Payne, he's able to kind of protect him a little bit, but they've got to stay attached to Frampton. 
Off the turnover, here comes Ellis. Dumps it off. Beautiful pass and the easy layup for Fabio Basili. Basili has started to find some favor with Kenny Payne getting into the lineup to take over at the point guard position to allow L. Ellis to get off the ball a bit. Great look on the back cut and the slam by Tyrone Marshall Jr. Ellis playing off the ball with Basili into the game and the foul's called against Christian Lander. Great ball movement against the zone. And Trainer forgets to drop. But that's one of the things when you're playing against a team that has so many three-point shooters on the floor, you often have to know where the shooters are but understand your responsibilities as well as to be able to take away the basket. That time, J.J. Trainer caught between two, doesn't take away the basket, concerned about the three, and gives up a dunk. We should also mention that Louisville is playing without Roosevelt Wheeler tonight. He is in concussion protocol. And he had had a good game last December against Western Kentucky. They could have used him, but uh, we don't know how long he's going to be sidelined. But some minutes for somebody else. Yeah, last year without Malik Williams in the lineup, Roosevelt Wheeler went four for four at Western Kentucky. One of the better games he had as a freshman a season ago. Well, that was an energized building. Diddle Arena, home of the Hilltoppers. And uh, when you've got Louisville coming to town, that's one of the programs you measure yourself against. And they were able to beat them convincingly by 10. And now at the point, Davion McKnight, he did play in this building here as a freshman, but it wasn't full. That was at the height of the pandemic. And uh, he came off the bench, played 17 minutes, had modest points. There's the turnover. Taken away by Basile. Great move to get to the other side and lay it in. And Basile making his impact felt early in this game. Two buckets in transition, both coming off of turnovers. And that's a positive sign for Kenny Payne if they can turn defense into offense. Lander for Tucson's coming off the bench. Here's the energy guy, Basile. Just past the midpoint of the first half. Ellis penetrates, hangs off the window, and the foul. Fabio Basile getting out into transition, coming up with the steal and taking matters into his own hands. The nice reverse layup for the finish to put two on the board for the Cards, who have now made it a four-point game. At the line, L. Ellis, who was last year's ACC Sixth Man of the Year runner-up. Well, here is Saturday's college basketball lineup on ESPN2 and the app featuring top 15 teams. Number 14, Indiana, and number 8, Kansas, start the day at noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central. Then my man C.A. is on the call with number 2, Virginia, and number 5, Houston. No, you're just going to be there rooting on the who's. I'm going to be on the sideline watching. I will be there checking out the action as a fan. Gotcha. Rocking my Wahoo sweatshirt. And then Tennessee, Arizona, the nightcap, 10.30 Eastern time. All that on ESPN2. A great afternoon and evening of college basketball. I knew you said beat, you'd be there. I thought you yeah, were working it. You I'll do games there. every night. Nah, I'm taking the day off. Go hang out. Watch some great basketball. Cardinals with another takeaway and a chance to tie or take the lead. Louisville started the game missing 7 of 10. They've now hit five in a row and have taken the lead. L. Ellis with eight points. Make it 10 points after draining the three. And it looks like we may have an issue with the clock. Once again, the Cards turning a turnover into a great offensive opportunity. L. Ellis coming off the screen and roll. No help was able to knock down the three. And Doug, Kenny Payne told his team after shoot around today, everything that has happened to this point doesn't matter. We are starting over 
from today and the effort that we've seen from the cards over this last five minute stretch looks as though they're believers and that they can start this thing over hit the reset button and have some success moving forward and you know he has said when we face adversity we can't revert basically to hero ball otherwise it snowballs and so far tonight for the first 11 minutes Corey they've taken a couple of punches but they've just kept coming and seem to stay together and they've had a number of players get involved in doing so we've seen Withers get in knock down a bucket but has got now transition got two buckets and then L Ellis has been able to be effective on the offensive end as well knocking down the big three to give them the lead but I think the change defensively going to the zone has helped this team since the first possession where Frampton was able to knock down the three ball. Outside of that, Louisville's done a great job defending at this point. Well, the shot clock had stopped at 22, so they went and retimed it and it took six seconds off. So the shot clock down to 16 seconds, the game clock down to 9.06. The guy Roger Ayers comes over, let us know that he shot. The clock stopped at 9-12. And so, therefore, they go back, reset it, get it all together. Western Kentucky, I'm sure, won't need those additional six seconds. Hilltoppers with their starting five back out there. McKnight with a rare three-point try, only his tenth of the season. Out of bounds, Louisville basketball. But I love the hustle from Hamilton. Getting on the floor, going after it, saving the basketball. Now in his fifth year of college basketball. And I'll tell you, you and I covered Jerry's Hamilton his freshman year at Boston College. He didn't make those plays then. You can see that this is a young man who's really grown up as a basketball player and a person. Had an opportunity to talk with him earlier today. Has really matured over his time in college. Yeah, he really remembers his freshman year coming into this building with Boston College and losing to a very good Louisville team. He had modest numbers, three points in 16 minutes as a starter. At the other end, Jordan Laura lit him up for 32. He wants a better outcome here tonight. And nothing modest about McKnight. He has let it be known. He is going to the basket, as we see now. The Hilltoppers going to a zone defensively as well. We knew Stansbury would mix it up. Kenny Payne talked to his team about it in shoot-around today. They're prepared. Well, McKnight grew up 30 miles east of here and was not recruited by Louisville. You know it means something when he comes into this building to play the Cardinals. Absolutely, and it means something to L. Ellis to knock down back-to-back -back threes. Acott, no, Sharp with the offensive rebound. And we've got ourselves a timeout. 7.50 remaining in the first half. Dougie Fresh, normally when I come to the building, I ask L. Ellis, what you got for me? Well, today, it's been the three ball. Ten years ago, we started on Tuck It Out. They never led against Florida State, and they led only briefly against Miami. And when they took the lead here a couple of minutes ago, they're playing on the plus side. Maybe that energy continues to build. I believe so, and the energy has continued to build in this building. Shout out to the card faithful, but you set me up, Dougie Fresh. How so? Because I'm thinking that it's all Louisville fans but Western Kentucky wears red and black as well, correct? Oh, that's right. You don't know. It, uh, well, of course I don't know. You should know but that I, I didn't don't say know. Corey is colorblind. So it didn't even occur to me that you didn't understand the fact that, well, they're two and a half hours away. They're going to be some Hilltopper fans here. Well, I figured there'll be Hilltopper fans here. But, I mean, again, the fact that they wear the same colors, you know. Hilltopper fans are into it. I mean, again, the environment they had for last year's Louisville game, Diddle Arena is one of the best home court advantages in Conference USA. But you're right. The Hilltoppers are red and white. The Cardinals are red and black. Tough to tell them apart, especially if you're colorblind. I tell you what, you got to love the energy from the freshman from Orlando. vasili has got six points off the bench. Back the other way, Frampton, no. And Basile does a great job getting back, affecting the shot for Frampton, not giving him a wide-open look. McKnight going to work and earns another trip to the free-throw line. And this is what I would expect from Fabio Basile because he played for my guy Steve Reese, Oak Ridge High School in Orlando. And just like Kenny Payne, Steve Reese coaches his guys up, coaches them hard, holds them accountable. And so a good fit for Basile coming in. And doing it very late. 
He was a mid-August commit, Corey. Yeah, and, and again, you know, when you look at him, he's able to be able to come off the bench and give L. Ellis minutes off the point. So L. Ellis can go to doing what he does naturally, be a scorer. And he's done that here this evening so far. McKnight now into double figures. Near turnover in the backcourt. Cardinals keep it. And a foul given near midcourt. Hamilton and McKnight had Land's double team. But it's the second foul on McKnight. And Dougie Fresh, we've seen something here in this game that you haven't seen from the cards all season long. We had the graphic up a few seconds ago. Louisville has 10 points off of Western Kentucky turnovers. The Hilltoppers only have three. This is not a battle that Louisville has won all season long. We've talked about the fact that they've turned the basketball over so much. They have a one to two assist to turnover ratio yeah. on the season. Coming into the game, 72 assists as a team, 153 turnovers. Those numbers are astonishing when you think about it. It's hard. I mean, you can't win games like no. that. I mean, that's one of the main reasons why this team is 0-9 on the season. But yet, they are taking care of that battle here so far today. Corey, they're last in the ACC in scoring, scoring margin, field goal percentage, field goal defense, assists, blocks, turnover margin, and assist to turnover ratio. They're shooting 37% from the floor, 29% from the arc. It's really hard to win games like that. And as we say in the hood, why are you bringing up old stuff? That's not, that was yesterday's business. Well, Kenny Payne said, we're talking about now. L. Ellis has things moving on the offensive end of the floor. Sidney Curry denied by the big man, but he is called for the foul. And that's the physicality Coach Payne was looking for out of Sidney Curry against the 7-5 Hilltopper center. It absolutely is. And the Louisville faithful on their feet applauding the effort of everyone on the floor, especially Sidney Curry, as he tries to put the 7-5 chart through the rim. So you're trying to say Kenny Payne was as prophetic at the end of shoot-around this morning as you were at the start of the broadcast today. Yeah, he's my guy. That's what we do. All right. Yeah. Yeah. He made it clear. He made it clear to his team. He made it clear to us. Everything that has happened to this point, we can't control that. That's over. That's in the past. Let's start new today. And they have received that message, and it is going well for the first 14 minutes of this first half. Frampton. Got it. Western Kentucky had missed its last five shots over the last four minutes until the sharpshooter from Polka, West Virginia, stood tall. And it's a small thing, but you have to pay attention to details. If you're L. Ellis, you have to step out on that one. And Ellis looking for a foul on that three. Here comes Rawls going downhill and drawing the foul. Rawls has been a nice change of pace coming back to Western Kentucky with a 3-1 to one assist to turnover ratio. He spent a couple of years with the Hilltoppers, made the All-Conference USA All-Freshman team, and decided to transfer out, went to Georgia State, didn't make it through the year, decided to come back, and Coach Stansbury sure is glad to have him. That's This is the second time we've seen that. Didn't we have someone from West Virginia that did that early yes. this year? Yes, went to UW and then came back to West Virginia. Yes. I'll tell you what, look at these coaches being compassionate and considerate. I'm not sure if you leave me. It'd be one thing if you left a previous coach. But if you leave me as the coach, go away, and then you want to come back, I'm not sure I'd be so forgiving. So you're spiteful. No, no, that's not it. Just not as forgiving when it comes to that. Well, I've always known Coach, Hug coach Huggins was more forgiving than you. <laughs> Huggy Bear. <laughs> you would know that. His name is Huggy Bear. He has to be. Tend to shoot. Just over five to go in the first half. Now Louisville's got to go. There goes Ellis, challenging the big man. Curry keeps it alive, but it's Sharp who comes away with it. And you can see the Sharp effect on the interior, challenging that shot. Foul against Basili on the low post defense. And Sidney Curry getting involved in the action. 
in this game. And you look at Sidney Curran. Look, look at the last three games from him last season. Heading into the ACC tournament, he was averaging 23 points per game, 70% from the field, 10.7 board, and 31.7 minutes. That was the last three games of the regular season a year ago. Comparing it to the numbers from this season, he is 6 for 15 coming into the day in nine games. Against Wake Forest last year in that three-game stretch, he went 13 for 18 and scored 28 points. He had more field goal attempts in one game last year than he has in nine this season. He was dominant closing out the season, like you say, Corey. But part of it is that his weight ballooned in the offseason, and he is still trying to work himself back into that kind of shape. J.J. Trainer has his first three. Trainer has provided that shooting punch with knocked down two threes at Florida State. We talked about them making a season-high nine three-point field goals in that game, and his shooting touch is carried over. Acott to the corner. Jump shot well short. The energized Cardinals with the basketball up by five. And this is the time right here where L. Ellis now has to sell in, run the point, get every other guys involved, not take it upon his shoulders to take a hero shot. Out the trainer, clean look. But I love the play from Ellis on that one. You get the basketball to the hot guy. Acott under control. You can tell that this is a game that Acott came in prepared to make sure he was ready for. Preseason All-Conference USA pick this year. And he started out setting the tone with Jalen Withers about how this game was going to be played. It was going to be physical. It was going to be competitive. Ellis with a runner. He stays hot. 15 points now for the senior out of Quality Education Academy in Winston-Salem. Rawls lobs inside, taking away another steal for the Cardinals. And lands wide open. This time he couldn't cash in. Acott with the basketball, played his first two years at Arizona and a couple of years at Boise. His pass to the corner for a wide open look. Nothing but net for Jarius Hamilton. That's what makes Western Kentucky so dangerous. You've got four players on the perimeter that can shoot the three ball with the big foul in the middle. And they use that three point line as a weapon. Sharp comes up to help. Tries to recover, but can't. Ellis able to get the bucket. A smart play by L. Ellis going to the opposite side of the rim, negating the shot blocker. He can't stick his hand through the rim, and that's the only reason he didn't come away with the block shot. There you see already better than his season average here in the first half. Again, the defensive intensity for the Cardinals is worthy of pointing out. Timeout here in Louisville. Without Reese... They could wear down Kihei Clark, making him have to do too much. But I do like the fact that Virginia has depth this year. Ryan Dunn, Isaac McNeely coming off the bench, really give them depth in the backcourt. And of course, Bennett Vanderpaz as that frontcourt depth. Virginia's depth this season is different than it was a year ago. And Corey, I was going to bring up Ryan Dunn's name if you didn't. You know how you just take a shine to certain players when you see them? Mm-hmm. He, to me, is the perfect UVA guy who's going to have a marvelous career there and be so versatile. Withers for three. Cardinals build the lead to seven. This is the most points they have scored in a half this season. But I love the way that Withers has responded. I was here in game three for the Cards when they lost to App State. Withers got in foul trouble. He never got involved in that game. He gets in foul trouble early in this game, but he comes back, he responds, and helps his team here on the floor. Timeout time Louisville. We'll step away as well. Cards up seven. Why is Aaron happy? Well, Carvana has tens of thousands of cars under $20,000. So Aaron's folks could help hook him up 
with a new ride. We'll drive you happy at Carvana. The first time you connected your website and your store was also the first time you realized... Well, we can do anything. Cheesecake cookies? The Chucky! Manage all your sales from one place with a partner that always puts you first. GoDaddy, tools and support for every small business first. Doug Sherman, Corey Alexander. It's one thing to be 0-9 in the middle of December. It's another thing to be 0-9 in the middle of December here at Louisville. I mean, the expectations and the attention that you get. These kids feel it. There's no question about it. You feel like tonight they are responding in a very positive manner. They absolutely have. And if you're Kenny Payne, you have to be excited about them with your team has approached this game. And we've talked about it. This is one of the proudest fan bases that you will ever find in college basketball. The only reason they're not considered a blue blood is because they don't wear blue and their enemy does. How do you so, know? <laughs> because I know the colors. I can read the crayons. <laughs> Big Blue Nation. Don't they have a game coming up? Kentucky? Are we allowed to talk about the Wildcats while we're here in Louisville? Don't they play Louisville? Well, Do they do. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Don't they have a game coming up between the two teams? There's your guy from the left corner again. Well, you didn't call that one, though. Well, because I was arguing with you over something. But the fact that I'm here and he knows it, knows it means it's time to, it's time to make shots. All six of his points have come from that same corner. Timeout called by Rick Stansbury. It's a 7-0 Louisville run. This matches their largest lead of the season, plus 10. I was a fool. Are on a run to open up a 10-point lead. Brandon Huntley Hatfield with the corner three. Came into the year only one for seven. He's made two so far tonight. It might be their night. It might be. And right now, it has been their first half. And an important possession right here to take this positive momentum into the locker room for the cards that they can come up with a stop and possibly a score to end. And you know, Western Kentucky's going to have the ball in the hands of their first-team all-conference point guard, Davion McKnight, with a dozen. Five seconds. Runs into the 7-5 center, brings it back out. And it's a three at the buzzer. J.J. Trainer. The Cardinals with their largest lead of the season as they head to the locker room. And this is the way you take momentum into the half. L. Ellis attacking the big man. J.J. Trainer replacing. Is able to step up, knock down the... Because you know what happens. Oh, you think no, you I'm really not, have I'm not control over this thing? Yeah, I'm not saying that I have control over it. But if Louisville does not win this game, it's because <laughs> you said that. I was not reading that stat. So you're the guy at the end of each quarter in the NBA or at the end of the game when you're leading and you're not going to take a shot, you would pass to one of your teammates so they get the turnover. They call it sabotage. Sidney Curry starting his third straight game, coming up big in that first half, has himself a layup, and the lead balloons to 13 points. And Sidney Curry, much more aggressive in the painted area. Kenny Payne talked to us about that. He wanted him to challenge Sharp. And you see what it does for his team on the other end of the floor. It becomes a more aggressive rebounder. With a pass deflected. And right now, I like Curry once again. You see if you can get the basketball inside the zone and give him an opportunity against the big guy. Another wide open look from the corner for Louisville. Huntley Hatfield, though, made a couple of them in the first half. Misfires here in the second. And you're okay with that shot if you're Kenny Payne, and you're not okay with the fact that Knight gets to the basket whenever he wants and continues to be fishing around the rim. Well, again, this is a Western Kentucky team off to its best start in 16 years. Eight and one coming here to Louisville tonight. This is a proud program with great tradition, although I was surprised, Corey, the Hilltoppers haven't been to the NCAA tournament now in 10 years. Huntley Hatfield. Well, part of that is because you have to win the conference tournament. And Conference USA, they've had great seasons. But, of course, anything can happen in March. McKnight. 
No foul called either way, and McKnight is down hurt. Looks like he's going to walk it off. And that stat line is reminiscent to what we saw in their last game Saturday against Wright State. Efficient, not having to get it done from the three-point line, able to get into the paint. And we have seen that so far tonight. Yeah, and he has been in attack mode from the beginning of this game, getting downhill and getting to the rim. Corey, that's the third foul on Mike James, who spent much of the first half on the bench. He will head back there now, being replaced for Louisville by Kamari Lamb. But one of the things Louisville has gotten in this game is great production off the bench. Vasily, J.J. Trainer have come in and stepped it up, and now it's time for the starters to see if they can build on the lead. Here's Lands for three. Got it! So the team that doesn't usually shoot the three well is doing it tonight, and the team that is among the best in the country at shooting threes isn't so far. Land shooting 15% on the season, came in three for 20. The look away pass and the flush. Another assist for Ellis, and the easy two for Withers. L. Ellis is having himself a great time here, and not just to scoring his sixth dime of the night. Ten years of turnovers. That is more important for his team to be successful tonight than would be him scoring 30-plus points. Well, those six assists ties his personal single game high. Let's see if he can get to 10. Meanwhile, the point guard for the Hilltoppers, Davion McKnight, with his 14 points. Here goes McKnight to work once again. Able to get back to his dominant left hand. Missed it. Goes again and is denied. Great hustle to save the ball in bounds. Hilltoppers have it, though. And great hustle by McKnight to not give up on the play with Sidney Curry. Was a little nonchalant going for the basketball. Here goes McKnight again. A little strong. Hamilton puts it back in. Four opportunities on one possession for Western Kentucky, sticking to it. And now they lead the second chance points battle 7 to 0. Louisville, zero second chance points in this game. Ellis bounces through the legs of the big man for a layup. A nutmeg assist. For career what, high number seven. L. Ellis is having a great time in this game. He's celebrating after every big play. Even through the timeout once, he was running around on the floor looking for someone to hug. Goes five hole here between the legs to Hundley Hatfield and showing off. Those aren't even goggles. Those are binoculars. He can see <laughs> things that others don't see with the naked eye. Brandon Huntley Hatfield putting together a nice game. The sophomore from Clarksville, Tennessee, has 11. Well, again, this is completely foreign territory for the Louisville Cardinals this year. Having a big lead like this, their largest lead of the season. Emmanuel Acom. Quickly up ahead. Withers into the lane. Offensive foul. That's going to be three on Withers. Who was kind of caught in no man's land on that possession. Wasn't aggressively attacking the basket. Passing the basketball. But only the sixth turnover for the Cards in this game, and if you're Kenny Payne, you have to be happy with that number. What's Louisville been doing to try and better defend Luke Frampton? He's only got the two made threes, got the ball now. Great pass on the cut by Hamilton. Well, the one thing Louisville can't do is because they're playing well offensively, forget about what got them to this point. That was, they did the job defensively in the first half. 
slowing down the Hilltoppers. So right now, they've got to get back to the defensive attitude, even though shots are going the right direction. Well, they had field thought better of trying to feed the ball to the post. Now five to shoot for Ellis. Fifteen twenty-four to go in regulation. Timeout here at the KFC Young Center. It has, you know, but the thing for Louisville, they're playing better. They've just played against better competition. And at the end of the day right now, it's starting to manifest itself in a lead. And we'll see if the cards can hang on to this for remaining 15-20 to get Kenny Payne his first win as a head coach in college basketball. First foul on Brandon Huntley Hatfield. And I should mention before we went to break, that foul was on Davion McKnight, his third for Western Kentucky. But Louisville opened the season, as many of you know, by losing three straight one-point games. But since that time, against only major conference competition, they have lost everyone by an average of 25 per game. Acock did everything but the finish. Ellis with a burst of speed. Unable to get past Sharp, who takes it in the mouth. Let's see if he's all right. We've got a foul on the rebounding action. Second foul on Acock. And Sharp ran into Sidney Curry on that one. And normally you run into Sidney Curry, you're going to lose that battle. Make sure you got all your teeth. <laughs> and so there are the broad shoulders of Sidney Curry, senior out of Northrop High School in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Nicknamed Big Ticket. ACC Network will have the Louisville game against NC State next Thursday. Catch an ACC matchup dating all the way back to the 1940s in Raleigh. And we're talking South Carolina. Women's coming up. I can read that one too. <laughs> well, the graphic show that we've got the number one ranked women's basketball team in the nation on ESPN2. And we'll talk about that coming up. We've got a picture of my man playing with... Uh, Don Staley, and we'll explain why Corey Alexander and Don Staley were sharing a court with some pretty good company. Well, that was just the one time it was caught in the photo. Louisville's defense holds up by 19. Trainer gets it back, puts it up, barely grazed the iron. Curry back out to land for three. And Louisville still with no second chance points. Haven't been great on the offensive glass in this game, but have taken care of the defense, defensive glass as McKnight comes up with the offensive board and now makes the advantage 9-0 for the Hilltoppers in second chance points. Another wide open corner three for Louisville, and it goes down for Kamari Land. And we would have to call that the epitome of a home bounce <laughs> or bounces every part of the rim a little tap off the backboard and this is the largest lead of the night largest lead of the season for louisville back to an eight beat team point game as mcknight delivers again he will not be denied but the thing about this game really has been about louisville and their shooting off the steal sharp ahead to hamilton finds the hustling teammate for the throwdown and the foul, Emmanuel Acott will go to the line for a three-point play. And where the cards have been so good throughout this game, handling the basketball and not turning it over, allowing the Hilltoppers to come up with second-chance points, that has started to go away a bit here as of late. Hamilton to Acott to finish. Brandon Huntley Hatfield just adds insult to injury. You're not going to block that one. Don't bother getting involved in the mix and giving Akon a free throw. And I love the fact that Jamarion Sharp not only came up with the steal, but he delivered a dime. Doesn't get the assist for it. He'd get a hockey assist, but very nicely done for the young man who is 7'5", the tallest in college basketball this year. Well, we've got a number of NBA scouts in the building. Had a couple conversations earlier, and I'm assuming that he would be the guy they're here watching. 
Well, that time scored right over him, and Mike James is letting the big fella hear it. Yeah, James, undeterred by seven foot five, goes through the body, maneuvers the basketball around to be able to finish. Well, they had a pro day at Western Kentucky in the preseason for the pro scouts to come in and see Jamari on Sharp, so he's very much on their radar. And he's got a big hill to climb. He didn't start seriously playing basketball really until he got to junior college. Basketball was not his thing coming up. And I'm imagining what his thing was because I don't know when he grew to seven foot five, but I would have thought somebody would have been saying, hey, buddy, how about you help play with this round ball a little bit? And he played a little of varsity basketball, but not a lot. Another big bucket for Kamari Lance. He's into double figures, and the bench loves it. And this is not a team that has shot the three well at all this season, but right now they are getting it done. Louisville ball. Kamari Lands comes into the year shooting 15% from three. He knocks down his third on the evening. Put on, I got Fred Whitfield. You see Monty Williams, Rodney Rogers, so many studs in that picture. But Dawn and I sharing the point guard position alongside, we have Michael Jordan on our team too, so that didn't hurt. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say we won because I don't think Google can find out any stats. <laughs> And again, that was Dawn Staley bottom left with CA right next to her, and then two over was MJ. Although I gotta ask you, you say that was the world's greatest pickup game? Yes. I wasn't invited. How could that be? Because it was the world's greatest pickup game. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you were not invited. I actually sent that picture to Dawn the other day and uh Talked with her for a little while, told her, I got to do a South Carolina game. She says, come on. So, Pat Lowry, if you hear me, mm -hmm. I need a South Carolina women's basketball game at some point to go talk about my big sis. Pat Lowry, one of our bosses back in Bristol, coordinating producer in charge of assigning women's basketball games. I would think they could get that done for you, CA. Well, I mean, being that I put the pressure on now by saying it on national television, I think we can make it happen. It's as good as done. There you go. Because you said so. No. Another turnover for the Cards. They haven't handled the basketball as well here in the second half as we saw in the first half. And it ends up being a three on the other end. And right now, Kenny Payne does not want to allow his team to get sloppy, as you've seen. Rick Stansberry extend the 1-3-1 one, one pressure, and it slowed down the offensive attack of the Cards. Lands his pass deflected by Sharp. Louisville keeps. Ellis puts it up and in. First two points here in the second half for Ellis, getting 19 for the night. But a needed basket as the fans here, everyone's starting to get a little restless simply because the cards have gotten a little sloppy on the offensive end of the floor. Christian Lander, nice looking move in the paint. There's another one of my guys. He is a bucket. Young man reclassed up to go to Indiana. Didn't work out in Bloomington and has found himself in his dad's alma mater of Western Kentucky. Yeah, dad was a Hilltoppers football player back in the day. McKnight attacks, dishes to the corner. Here is Lander who pulls it back out. 6'3 junior from Evansville, Reitz High School. Out of control down the lane, he turns it over. Ellis trying to make him pay at the other end. Another, well, would have been wide open look, but unfortunately for Louisville, Kamari Lands was on the sideline. There's my guy, Keith Lander, checking out the action, rocking his Western Kentucky gray hat. Talk with Keith pregame. Made the couple hour trip down from Evansville. You know who his football coach was at Western Kentucky? I have absolutely no idea. Sharp with the flush. That would be Jack Harbaugh. Really? Him. The two NFL, former NFL head coach and current NFL head coach, Jim and John. That's good stuff. I wish to rely on you for one great nugget each game. I got that out of the way. 
L. Ellis is feeling it tonight. And that's been the difference between these two teams. Western Kentucky comes in second nationally from beyond the three-point arc, shooting 43.3%. But it's been the cards who have been dominant from beyond the arc here tonight. Foul along the baseline. Well, Ellis has gone over 20 points for the third time this season, fifth time in his career, doing it in many different ways. And if you play the numbers, you allow L. Ellis to take that shot, but not tonight, as he has been on fire. And the Cardinals bench loves him. Uh, he had a career-high 29 points against Wright State, did it again against App State. And in the first three games, he scored 72 points combined. Guess who the only Cardinal is to have scored more than 72 points in the first three games of the season? I'm going to go with Jordan Warren on that. Am I correct? Nope. Oh. Think Naismith Hall of Famer. Oh. Wait, 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 wait. Naismith Hall of Famer. Dr. Duncan Stein? Mm -mm. He's not in... Uh, Springfield. Ellis, tough shot. Couldn't get the roll. Sidney Curry with the left hand. The reemergence of Sidney Curry. This is the Sidney Curry that I've been waiting on, and more importantly, the Louisville faithful has been waiting on all season long. Hamilton lost it. Foul on the floor. And if that's on McKnight, that's his fourth. Indeed it is. That is number four on Davion McKnight. Sidney Curry, a season-high 10 points, five rebounds, comes into the game averaging 1.7 points per game and 3.6 rebounds. This has been the, this is the Sidney Curry we've been expecting all season long. This is the guy that finished the year last year as a force on the interior for the Cardinals. Offensive foul. Well, let's get back to the trivia question that, Corey, you were floundering on. Yeah, I mean, who has scored the most points to begin a season in the first three games in Louisville basketball history? He's a Naismith Hall of Famer, and there's your answer. Uh, how did I miss that? <laughs> My goodness. That would be one West Unsell. How did I miss that one? That's all right. We don't no, really expect not you okay. to come up with that. Not okay. Christian Lander trying to heat up a little bit, knocks down the three. It's been a struggle from beyond the arc for the Hilltoppers. Big bucket for Lander on this last possession. Again, Ellis able to work off the ball with Fabio Basilian. Basili has matched his career high as a freshman with six first half points. Here he goes, working on Acock, puts it up. And the double slam, J.J. Trainer. Hamilton can't quiet the crowd. He grabs the rebound. And that is a pretty good answer on the corner three by Lander. Well, Lander knocking down back-to-back -back threes, but that was not the play of this sequence. It was Vasily getting to the rim. The soft touch doesn't finish, so J.J. Trainer takes it down with the sword. An experience. Lineup, and you have trainer coming off the bench. That gives you a different dynamic as well. It absolutely does. And you see now West Kentucky going to some full court pressure. This is where you can see if Louisville has truly matured as a team, handling the basketball against the full court. And it's going to be a turnover. Backcourt violation. L. Ellis is losing the basketball. So would you say you just jinxed him on that one, Corey? I would not say that. But I will. If you said I'll it, say it. I would not fight it. <laughs> and that is going to be the fifth turnover for L. Ellis hitting his season average on the night. The only thing that he has done not to perfection. Tyler Olden has come off the bench. 
No basket because, again, we've got a player receiving a pass while standing on the sideline. And that has probably become the most common turnover since the NCAA went from 19-9 to 21-9, the FIBA line, a few years back. And you often see players standing in the corner, stepping out of bounds. Rick Stansbury repeatedly told us before and after shoot-around today, don't be fooled. Ellis, plus the foul. He said this is still an ACC team. They still have a lot of talent. Don't be fooled by the 0-9 record. And he also said this is still Louisville. Basketball is king at Louisville. There is talent on this team. As L. Ellis makes up for the turnover, handles the pressure perfectly, doesn't play passive, attacks the basket, gets the bucket, an opportunity for the end one. Played a couple of years at Tallahassee Community College. Can't finish off the three-point play. Still with 24 points to lead all scores. 640 left in regulation. Hilltoppers going with an extended stretch without their 7-5 center, Jamarion Sharp on the floor. Lander penetrates to the right hand now. He's got that quick burst though. He absolutely does. Dansbury talked about his quickness and how he'll most likely play a bigger role as this season goes along because you see he's a mix-up from McKnight. He's more of a three-point shooter. Oh! Coming out of nowhere is Hamilton. He's got a double-double, 17 points, 10 rebounds. Second time this year Hamilton has done that. Withers with a clean look. Perfect. And David Withers is a young man who was an all-rookie team in the ACC as a redshirt freshman. And he has had an inconsistent career. If they can find consistency with him this season, it will help these cars tremendously. Hamilton. Got it. Screen for Ellis. Withers into the lane. Had it knocked away. Louisville keeps. Five seconds to shoot. Ellis right to the hole. I love that play by L. Ellis. Not settling for a long distance three just because the shot clock's going down. Recognizing he could beat his man off the dribble. No one at the rim to help with Sharp out of the game. Emmanuel Acott, yes, big answer at the other end. Timeout, Western Kentucky, and that is their last timeout, Corey. And right now, Rick Stansbury trying to find a way to get right back into this one, trailing 13 for 29 remaining. You can feel confident, continent. Johnson, he's been efficient, 10 of 16 from the floor. He's been very good from three, four out of six and he has spearheaded a very well-balanced effort. It really has, but the well-balanced effort has come because he has been distributing the basketball very well. When you look at the other guys making shots, a lot of that has been off of passes from L. Ellis. Curry, big on the offensive glass. Sharp, able to pull down the rebound. I'm okay with that. I'm happy with that. Even though he doesn't come away with the two points, he does get the offensive board. Rim run on the lob, McKnight to the big fella. That's an easy two for the Hilltopper. But if you're Kenny Payne, you're not happy about that. Who is supposed to be in help position to get a body on Sharp, not allowing him to have the free run to the rim? Well, Sharp rolled his ankle back in late November. He still is in a walking boot throughout the day, but he is getting back to himself. Says it feels good, and it certainly has looked good on more than one occasion here tonight. shot clock. Ellis rises up. That would have tied his career high. So now what cannot happen at this point for Louisville, 
They can't allow the zone to make them so passive to where they're taking shots up against the shot clock. Right now, L. Ellis has to continue to try to get into the teeth of that zone and find his teammates. Kenny Payne encouraging his guys to keep playing. Don't just get passive, passing the ball around on the offensive end of the floor. Even though they have their season high in made threes and even though they're better than 50% from distance tonight. Well, at this point in the game, you don't want to go early. McKnight, no. Fight for the ball, McKnight's got it again. And once again, a player is on the sideline. It's Frampton this time, another unforced error. But, and time is called by Louisville. And I can tell you right now, Kenny Payne is going to have a conversation with his team about watching the ball, waiting for one of your teammates to go get the defensive rebound in comparison to getting a body on someone and going to get it on your own. ACC Network will have the Louisville game against NC State next Thursday. Catch an ACC matchup dating back to the 1940s in Raleigh as the Wolves of NC State seek to continue their winning record. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern. What do you think of NC State this year, Corey? I think that NC State is playing the Kevin Keith style of basketball. I believe they're doing a great job distributing the basketball and sharing it. And, of course, you've got to play beyond Smith who is a knockdown three-point shooter, but more than just that, he is a scorer as well. And we get a look at those two, these two teams, two guys from the state of North Carolina, a.k.a. the Hoop State, going at it in that game. Tequavion and L. Ellis, both from the Hoop State. There is Ellis in the midst of a marvelous game, his first career double-double with the 10 assists. His previous career high in assists was six. And Dougie Fresh, you know, in this job, one thing we learned to do is re lift very well. Kenny Payne, in the last timeout, holds up his hand. Five. That is five. He was talking about offensive rebounds by point guard Davion McKnight. He mm. has five offensive rebounds in this game for the Hilltoppers which is unheard of of a point guard going to get five offensive rebounds. And, of course, Coach Payne not happy about the fact that the Cards cannot get the basketball inbound at this point. And when you haven't won a game, this is the time where that pressure starts to mount on you. You've made plays all season long to cost you games at this time. Now you've got to start making plays to win a game and Coach Payne trying to coach his team up to make those plays here over the last 3.05. Okay, well, Kenny Payne continues to say we're laying the foundation, but can you truly lay a solid foundation if you don't win games? His players need to see the work pay off into a victory. That would be great for everyone in the environment. The players, the coaching staff, the fans, everyone involved, it would be great to see their hard work pay off in a win. And they want to stop hearing about the worst this and the worst that. It's the worst start in ACC history, the worst start in program history since the early 1940s. They can put an end to it tonight if they can hold on in the next 3.05. Ellis guarded by Lander. Here comes the double team trying to get the ball out of Ellis's hands. And a blocking foul against Lander, his third. And that is the 17th foul on the Hilltoppers. Now here's another area that has been a struggle. L. Ellis comes into the game shooting 68% from the free throw line. And of course, at the end of games, when you're going to be the primary ball handler, you've got to be able to go and take advantage of these opportunities, especially one and ones This is a young man who in many ways has the weight of the world on his shoulders as the lead player on this team and he said in a press conference earlier this week to the general press here in Louisville sometimes I get down on myself I'm still learning and I appreciated the way he handled it because it's not easy for these kids who are 18 19 20 years old to have this much attention especially when it's so negative 
understandably, when you're 0-9, it's part of the deal, but it can't be easy. It absolutely is. And for L. Ellis, who's in his fourth year of college basketball, to say he's still learning, he's playing a completely different position. He's never been a point guard, a primary ball handler. So he's learning on the fly this entire season. He's never been asked in his basketball career to do everything that Kenny Payne's asking him to do. Here goes McKnight, able to get to the basket and the foul. And that's the second time that Brandon Hunley Hatfield has added insult to injury. At that point, he's not going to block the shot. So don't give McKnight a free throw to try to make it a 10 point game. At some point you have to see, okay, I'm not going to be able to defend this opportunity. Don't foul and make it worse. Young man out of Collins High School from Shelbyville, Kentucky, who was Mr. Basketball in the state of Kentucky three years ago. Having himself a marvelous night. He told me not long before tip-off tonight he was looking to play better than he did his freshman year here in this building, and he has done that. But more importantly for him, he wants to pull out this win. Huntley Hatfield secures the ball. Wasn't really the prettiest press break, but it was effective. But you can hear how antsy the crowd is just on every pass. Everything here late, and I'm not sure if Louisville recognizes the shot clock going down as Frampton bails lands out. Big time. I don't think Lance did. He was dribbling the wrong way with about six on the shot clock. And then the foul came with about three on the shot clock. That's that one. is number two on Luke Frampton. But for everything that Kamari lands, where he struggled shooting the basketball this year, it has not been at the free throw line. 15 for 16 on the season. Big time recruit out of Hillcrest Prep in Arizona. He's an Indianapolis kid. And having a good game tonight. One of five double figure scores for Louisville. McKnight from 16, no. Big rebound by Withers. And Ellis will work a little clock. Double team again to try and get it out of Ellis's hands. And now Ellis is going to have to go. And you know, when you look at his percentages on the year, I think a lot of it has to do with that. With the shot clock down, he's had to take a lot of shots like that this season. You know, but the one thing that the cards are doing. They're not looking at the basket. Jalen Willis catches the basketball in the corner. He's driving to the rim, but he's not driving to go score. It's under 10 seconds on the shot clock. Be aggressive and go score. You can't stop playing basketball just because you have a lead. That's what the shot clock does. You've got to get a shot up. Try to make it the best shot you possibly can. Down 12. Hilltoppers with it. Time is of the essence for Western Kentucky. Nice English with the left hand, 23 points now for McKnight. I tell you, McKnight is going to be a problem for opponents this year, the way he gets to the basket. First team all conference USA a year ago. Bodies go flying, two tops are down and hurting. McKnight's one of them. The other is Hamilton who's back up. Third foul on Luke Frampton. It has been a valiant effort for number 20. It absolutely has. And he has been impressive. No matter what move was thrown at him defensively, he has still found his way to the rim. He's a man who last season had a triple-double. 11 points, 10 rebounds, 10 assists, no turnovers in that game against Division III Center College from Danville, Kentucky. He stays in the ball game as Mike James shoots a one and one. Kenny Payne 
first year at his alma mater as the head coach. He and the folks here in the building can taste that first victory. Still a minute 12 remaining. Kenny Payne is not calm yet. With a 12 point lead, we have seen crazier things happen. And right now, Kenny Payne just trying to coach this one to a win and help his team finish the game the right way. Hilltopper still alive. You have to remember, Western Kentucky, no timeouts remaining, so Rick Stansberry cannot stop action. James runs the baseline, gets it in, and the foul is given with exactly one minute on the clock. And now Davion McKnight is fouled out of the ball game. Well, I can tell you right now, Davion McKnight got at least one new fan this evening. Mm -hmm. I am a fan of this young man. He has been spectacular here today. I love the effort that he plays with. Five offensive rebounds at the point guard position. Not afraid at all of the moment. He's one of those guys that I would be making sure to keep an eye out on for the remainder of this year. And one of those guys that could definitely take his team to a run and mark. Of course, he's a young man who's still finding his voice as an emerging leader on this Hilltoppers team that's gotten its season off to the best in 16 years for WKU. And he wanted to come in here and put on a show and get a win. Well, he put on the show, but the win may not come. Kamari Lance continues to go to the free throw line and handle his business. 15 points for Lance, a career high. Long rebound to Hamilton. He puts it up. Well, the folks here in the Ville cannot wait to exhale. They're 47.7 seconds away. A little bit of work to be done. Cardinals with a basketball up by 12. And the Hilltoppers have backed off. Happy for Kenny Payne. Happy for the Louisville faithful. Getting this first win, extremely important. Christian Lander and so Ellis will go to the free throw line one of the best college basketball fan bases in the country opportunity to celebrate their first win on the season and win number one for Kenny Payne I honestly believe that there will be many more to come but getting this first one has been a challenge I'll tell you what Reese Gaines 20 years ago was the last Louisville Cardinal against TCU to go for 30 points and 10 assists. L. Ellis is knocking on that door. Well, Reese is right over here in the building. Watching L. Ellis become the next to do that. 30 and 10, a career high points, career high assists for L. Ellis. In the first win for the Cards this season. Frampton. And that will be that. In what has been the longest month and a half in the history of Louisville basketball, the Cardinals finally get their first win of the Kenny Payne era. When you say it's not okay to celebrate